Parkland TV, welcome back, it's been a long time, long overdue, last time we left you off, Pakistan were lifting the Champions Trophy 2017, good memories, and we're back now, um, just ahead of the Pakistan tour of England and Ireland, uh, I'm just on my way to Ireland actually, so I'm gonna, uh, we're going to be giving you the live and exclusive coverage when we get there and uh, looking forward to it. It's going to be a transitional period at the moment for Pakistan, especially for their test team. Uh, the ODI team and the T20 team, they're pretty much set, I would say. You know, 2020, they're ranked number one in the world. ODI, on their day, they can be anyone, um, and they've got some good uh, limited over players, especially through the PSL, the likes of uh, Asif Ali, Tala uh, Tussain, these guys are coming through and they're looking good. And uh, it's just a test team. Obviously, any team that's going to lose big players like uh, Miss Ba and Yunus Khan are going to struggle to fill that void. But um, this is the interesting part now, this transitional period. And the team's interesting, to be fair. I'm not sure what you guys have thought. But, um, you know, the, there's a few players that haven't really been tested. You know, first class, yeah, they've got a good record, but on an international level, it'll be interesting to see how they cope. So these are all questions we're looking to pose and to see when we get out there. And, uh, you know, it's all leading towards uh, next year's World Cup, but that's all in due time we need to get through. So just a little bit of a recap uh, since we last left off. You know, the World Eleven came to Pakistan which was good this is all uh, leading to where we need to be where we need to get cricket back in Pakistan and where we can attract the profile high profile players you know the PSL has done wonders as well um, every year it's getting better and better it's producing talent for the national team which is the most important thing and you know they're bringing cricket back you know the finals in Karachi this time around uh, some more games in Lahore but well, going back to the World 11 they came to Pakistan um, played the three 2020s Pakistan one all, which was uh, fantastic. Must have been great to see for the fans, uh, being able to see their stars on home soil performing again. And we attracted uh, international players such as Mourne Mokro, Hashim Mamla, these guys all came. So that was good. And uh, after that, you know, there was the tour. Uh, well, Sri Lanka came to uh, Abu Dhabi, Dubai. And uh, we lost the, the, the test series to them. Uh, defeated them comprehensively in the ODIs, uh, thumped them 5-0 and then beat them in the T20 series 3-0 as well. So like I said, the, the limited format uh, were really firing more cylinders. Um, and the good thing about that was that the Sri Lanka team came for the final T20 to Lahore. So it's just slowly, slowly making small steps to bring cricket back to Pakistan. Uh, we had a very bad series of New Zealand, um, you know, lost all ODIs there. Beat them in the 2020 series, we are the number one right team in T20, so we're doing really well in that format. Uh, and then after that, we had the cricket back in Pakistan again with the three 2020s against the West Indies team. All the way back onto where we need to be, playing on home soil again, and we defeated them all at home compre comprehensively. This is now really the acid test because when they come to England, with the overcast conditions, the swinging ball just tend to struggle. But just generally, overall, um, it's difficult for any team this day and age to win away from home. So you can get any kind of result away from home. It's a, it's a real, real positive result. So we'll see how we get on even more so with us within the transitional phase. Um, and some interesting selections. I mean, two that kind of stand out to me, I don't know about the rest of you guys, is um, for Wad Alam, not being selected. I mean, he's been he speaking to a lot of Pakistani fans and also my friends. Uh, you know, he mixed his opinion. Uh, he has a mixed opinion amongst fans. You know, uh, a lot of people are frustrated with him. They say, and even you know, the selectors and some players say that you know he hasn't got the ability to hit that long ball, clear the clear the field, but. If you look at his first-class stats, you know, um, and in the domestic scene, 
back to back, back to back, he's performing, he's been right up there. Um, and certainly, if he's not going to get into the ODI, the T20 teams, I thought this would have been a perfect time to bring him in for the test series. Uh, you know, he's knocking on the door consistently. And uh, I believe, you know, especially with our experienced team, you know, he's got test cricket behind him and he's been bowled with both some of the youngsters coming through. Um, uh, Wahab Riaz has been dropped as well. Um, that was a bit of a shock to me because, you know, he had a good PSL as well. Um, he was joint leading wicket taker with Fahim Ashraf. But uh, that was a bit of a surprise to me, to, if I'll be totally honest with you. Um, you know, the pace that he bowls at, he's a, he's a game changer. You know, he can be erratic at times, we all know that, but give him the ball, um, you know, when you know a team's build up a good partnership and he can just deliver that fiery spell, 4-5 over the spell, and he can get the 2-3 two, two, wickets, get the breakthroughs for us. So, but I think, uh, you know, with Mickey Arthur, he mentioned him that, you know, he hasn't won us a game for about two years, which I think was a bit harsh because that could be levelled at a lot of players and, you know, Mickey Arthur himself in Test Series, you know, although however well he's done for us in ODIs and T20s, in Test matches, he's only, you know, out of 17 test matches we've lost 11 so you know the management has to take some you know accountability for that as well so i think it was a bit harsh to say that wahab was, hasn't won us a game for two years and me certainly i would have selected him but uh, i think uh, with uh, more than anything it was quite telling for mickey arthur's uh, interview was that he's looking to put a new um, you know, kind of face on this Pakistan team. He wants to have them, you know, disciplined in all aspects, not just turning up to play. He wants them to be disciplined in their fitness levels, in the training and everything. And that's something that he highlighted that, you know, Wahab in training, he doesn't perform and doesn't, you know, deliver to that level which he would like. Um, and which I understand, you know, obviously a coach on his, he wants to imprint his mark on the team. And, uh, but then it was at the same time it was it was quite strange because he said that you know when with ball in hand I can't fault Wahab um, so that I don't know it was it was kind of mixed signals but I think he's trying to send a strong message now to the players coming forward to the next generation coming through that you know it's it's about discipline it's about fitness levels it's about athleticism and uh, I can't knock him for that, you know, uh, because that's something, you know, the Pakistan team, no one can deny, you know, undoubtedly, skill for skill, talent-wise, we naturally produce world-level players, but it's just athleticism sometimes, the commitment on the field, and the fielding has kind of let us down, and if we can take these facets and uh, these attributes and get our players on par with that, then you know we're going to be on the next level and that's what he's trying to do um, and I think you're seeing that with the new generation that are coming through like the likes of Shadab Khan like quality, quality player you know and people forget his age, he's only 19 he's played in the Big Bash League PSO he's played in the Caribbean Premier League already he's won a Champions Trophy and you know with his fielding and the levels that he's performing you know he's dynamite in the field so um, I, I do understand uh, what he, the imprint that Mickey Alpha is trying to do so let's see how we crack on uh, you know I'm really excited that they've given Fahim Ashraf a go uh, he's a player that really excites me you know um, I honestly believe that he's got the ability to kind of replicate um, that role that Razak left I know it's big shoes to fill but I remember watching him in the Champions Trophy warm-up qualifier game, not a qualifier, a warm-up game against Bangladesh. Um, and we were actually losing that. And then he came out and just was hitting it out of the park sweetly everywhere. And, you know, his quality with the ball. Uh, he showed that in the Champions Trophy. He didn't play in any of the earlier games, came in in the crunch game. And he was the leading taker, a wicket taker in the PSL amongst all those quality bowlers that we've got in the tournament. So. Um, he's definitely one that I'm a big fan of and uh, I'm expecting big things from Fahim Ashraf so um, um, to be honest like our, our tour matches so far against Kent we didn't really get much of a run out um, the rain stopped the game but when we did uh, we didn't perform with the bat and uh, against North Ends, we we delivered so more than anything just to break it down I think in this uh, series it'll be because we're in the tr transitional phase it'll be the likes of uh, the experienced players like Azaveli, 
Asad Shafiq stepping up now, filling that void where you know they would rely on the Misbahs and Yunus Khan, um, and then to let the other players gel in and mould themselves. You know, there's a bit of controversy about Imam Al Haq's selection, more so that he's the nephew of Inza Imam Al Haq, but. He scored a century on debut in ODI against Sri Lanka, so there's no doubt he's got ability and um, taking that away, I think that he should be in the side. Um, the other guys, Salahuddin um, and Saad, you know, Saad has got a good uh, first class uh, uh, record, but like I said, we'll see how he cracks on in, uh, in the international circuit. Um, Salahuddin, obviously, he has played two ODIs before. Not nothing to go by. I think he made about 10 runs in two innings. So, like I said, you can't really judge him. It's still early days. Um, so let's just see how we crack on. Like I said, right here at Malahide Cricket Club in Dublin, which will host the first Ireland Pakistan Test match. So as you can see, work is being done to get the stands ready for the first historic test match for Ireland. Yeah. The players are coming out for the official photo shoot. We just had a training session before. 